Myra is going to fall into a pattern of sharing her artistic practice with you all. That's something we may not be able to do during regular open studios and people are like coming in and out of the studios and that can be kind of distracting. So this will be the first time that people get to see her as she's creating something. Um, what she will be creating or making for you all are silk screens. So you'll see what it looks like for her to create silk screens, which is something that she's been working on. Um, very recently, and she has been doing that within the studio this week since we have opened up the studios for our studio artists. Um, but a little bit of background about Myra. She was born in New York City and received her BFA from Washington University in St. Louis. She received her MFA in photography from the University of New Mexico and is currently a professor of photography and the chair of the Department of Art and Visual Culture at Spelman college. Um, she is represented by Patron Gallery in Chicago and Corvi Mora in London. Um, she's currently using diverse photographic practices and fabric manipulations to explore representations of race. Um, she is also working on a new body of work that uses African textiles and patterns to explore her relationship with culture. Um, I don't want to speak any more on that because that's something that I think she'll have more profound things to say. Um, so go ahead and take it away, Mara. Um, I'm going to do a little talk, a little show, a little print, and that should be 20 minutes with questions. And so that'd be really helpful. Um, so I don't know what you know of my work, but I've been dying and printing fabrics for about the last two, three years. And um, behind me, I'm just going to stand up and show you. What I do is I dye an already a, a colored fabric its complementary color to try to achieve the color of brown, the color of my skin, the, the, that tone, um, and in a variety of different um, a variety of different tones. So I'm always interested in this color brown um, and how you know we think about. Uh, culture and African American culture, and everyone says black, 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 but I'm always interested in this. And so that's why I, I try to work on that. So um, when this all started, the virus, um, I wasn't dying, but then I was pushed home and I started dying in my, <laughs> in my, uh, in my. So these are two yard fabrics. And so I dye them, they're complementary color, and it doesn't always work. Um, so I have some failures where I didn't go, where I went too green, or this, I probably didn't dye this red fabric green enough, if that makes sense. And so that's sort of stage one. Stage two, I'm gonna take you and flip you around to this, because this is where I kind of stopped or did two things. Um, the week everyone went into quarantine, I was teaching and Spellman gave us an extra week to prep for teaching. And I basically was in studio knowing that the studio would lock down. So I started doing the second stage on a normal, like a, just a solid piece of fabric. And so I would silk screen a pattern. And then I guess I should show you the patterns. I have the pattern in positive and negative. So I print one version say negative and then I print and fill in so here you can see sort of like can you see my fingers I'm pointing at things you can't see um here you sort of see it's one tone of purple and then an intense tone of purple and then um maybe I'll get you closer so I don't know how focused this gets but you'll see like there's a piece of uh painted yellow on top of fabric yellow um on top of purple and multicolors. So I was trying to really play with my silk screens and I'll show you them as I have to right here. Somewhere. There they are. I move things around and do things. So, then I don't know what I'm doing. so what I mean is I have a screen. You can't see it that way. Can't see print on print on print. Do it this way. So one screen is a positive. And then this screen is its opposite. So if I put them on top of each other, they will fill each other. Um, if Nora was on the call, she would say, Myra, this is the worst way to register and put information down on things, but that's what I do. I find some more fabric. 
finally got back and I got used to doing it in my garage. And I continued making ombres. So this one's kind of be hard to see. If I pull back, maybe you'll see it a little bit more. Um, so this fabric was blue, trying to dye it. I dyed it orange to try to turn it brown, and it didn't really work. So when, we got, when I got back to studio, I started that printing pattern again, where I print the pattern down, and then I would go back and fill in its voids, right? So I print the pattern in blue, fill in the void with this orange, and then print on top of that pattern again, and then print over and over and over. And I actually am really enjoying this technique. In the end, what's gonna end up happening is I will cut all of this and then make um, a textile piece out of it. So it's a lot of stages, and I'm gonna show you one more stage where I'm at. So I don't know how I'm gonna do this very well, but this is the fabric I started yesterday. And it is actually a really well dyed fabric. I'm very happy with this dye. That's why I chose it today. So it starts green and it was dyed red and it ends like a beautiful brown. And what you see on top of it is the first layer, which is this um, pattern here, which goes throughout the whole thing. And then you sort of see these interruptions. Here's one in red. Uh, it, oh. Here's another one in red. And so what I thought I'd do today is stage three, which is my interruption in green. So the way I choose the colors is I sort of work through the colors. This is gonna get really complicated really quick. I choose the colors based on the sort of complementary pattern that I'm working through. So what I do at this stage is I find, I try to match the pattern up again and then put color in. So I'm gonna do it here, because you can see that very easily, and I don't have to change the angle too badly. So I know I printed this this way, and there's this big Y here, and I'm gonna try to reprint this Y area over this area. So the hard part, and the frustrating part, is trying to match So, uh, there it is. Here's the green that I was using that I've had mixed up for a while. Um, all my tools are back here. I was going to show you. What's, but I, the reason why I think this is interesting is I'm really interested in how both culturally and physically race um, changes in context. So this red changes its appearance, its meaning, as it changes its environment. And so I, I, that's why that ombre underneath is really important. Um, but yeah, so this is the brown that went, I don't, the lighting's not great in here, but the brown that went down earlier. Um, and it looks not, it ends up never looking like the thing you make, the thing you mix. So, this ink is old and has been pushed through a screen like as I'm about to do a few times. So it's kind of goopy, but goopy can be good. Okay, so there's my green. I'm really, I don't want to mess up in front of you. All right, we're gonna say that works. Um, and so you just sort of push this through and then you pray, and when you lift it, if you can see that, I don't know if you can, um, it sort of sits and exists. Um, let's see, can you see? I don't know, can you see? So that green then just sort of sits into that place. And so what I become interested in is like, I always pick a space, and then I think where can the color have an interesting conversation? So I think I'm gonna go in here, and then by putting down this red, I saw, I see that there's the brown that should be there, like in this void here, didn't really print very well. So I'm gonna go in there and put in some color. 
and I'm going to put in some green here. But if you look at that green, which looks very foresty, and you look at this green, it looks really teal. And that's because, you know, that's how color works. <laughs> so, so I'm going to lift this back up. The issue with this really always is that um, this ink also, and I didn't put any, probably should, there it is. Um, I didn't put any um, extender, not extender, but dry stuff in there. I don't know what it's called. If Nora's on here, she could tell you. It's stuff that makes the ink not dry out so quickly. So you're really conscious of time. Ooh, that was off, but kind of gorgeous. Um, you're really conscious that like your ink is, you're always fighting the ink because it's always wanting to dry out before you are done with what you're doing. I think that's right. Okay. Ugh, I don't like that. Okay, so that was really lovely. I don't have me. <laughs> Someone in here photographing me who thinks I'm just stone. I love when people laugh with you. Um, so I went in, where am I? And like that sort of filled in really nicely. This one, I kind of missed it, but I kind of like it because it starts doubling in. And so now if I was alone and not handling a tripod, I would mad print this whole thing. I'm gonna kind of mad print it. So Mora wants to know, what type of paint do you use? Is it acrylic? It's not a paint. They are, um, they're inks made for, um, specifically for printmaking. Um, I use a version that is, has, which is trans, well, they're transparent based. They're water soluble. What happens is they then get their, um, like this could all wash off. If I put it in a washing machine, it'll all wash away. So it all needs to be heat set while um, after it's done in a washing machine. I use inks that are pearlescent, meaning that they have a little bit of shine to them. And then I use extenders, which things that make the ink go longer with um, extenders to them with both that make them both more transparent and more transparent and last a little longer. I'll show you when I finish this goober. I just wanted that little pocket. Um, I'll show you, I have a, a, a row of inks up top. Next question. Perfect, Jordan wants to know, well, she says, thank you, Myra. Um, sure. She's excited by this process that you are developing and sharing with us and wants to know, Silk screening and dyeing have really different histories in the 20th century art, like Warhol versus Gilliam, for instance. What uh -huh. do you think is happening when you combine these two historical processes, and what does that mean for you and your work and concerns? That's a complicated question, as I am not a natural printmaker, a natural dyer, a natural... I'm a photographer by training, so like, I get into this sort of by the idea of burning a screen, Right, and that idea that these photographic processes are linked. Um, a lesson taught to me by my ever so loved um, professor, uh, Tom Barrow. Um, I think there's a history of, because there's also an element that's not seen right now, which is, um, which is sewing, right? And crafting, and so I think there's a lot about, I would say all of my processes are really, um, driven by making, by handwork, by labor. Um, and those things I find really personally satisfying as I spend my Saturdays and most days here for four or five hours doing this. It's my backwards. Um, but yeah, that's so I don't know. I, did, I don't think I answered your question at all. Um, I think what I also like about these processes is it allows me to play with abstraction in really interesting ways. I think I'm leaving my own shot, but I'm not on myself anymore. 
Any more? Does that not answer your question? <laughs> for some of it, um, it sounds like where she was coming from a art historical context, you kind of contextualize it for your own personal um, practice, which is that you are learning this as you go and it's not necessarily rooted in anything other than your own curiosity and your own interest in what this is doing as it relates to um, culture, as it relates to your personal experience and as it relates to the kind of background you have in photography. Um, the dated me, <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, Maura's next question, um, <laughs> kind of going into the same things that you were just touching on about culture, um, and her question is, can you talk any more about exploring race in this particular making and future quilt quilting process? Yeah. Um, you know, you know, I used to make self portraits um, and use the body and. You know, I think this conversation about blackness and, and race and being has been a complicated one. Ooh, that's good. A complicated one in African American history and his in American history. And I just sort of came to this realization that I just didn't want to use the body. I didn't want to use my body. And I wanted to find a language that was honest and true, um, that was easily identifiable, that took away the body. Because I think the body, I mean, we've seen it in the last two weeks, the, the, the black body is just a, a crazy space of interaction, of violence. And I kind of just wanted to stay, understand the stories, but also sort of create my own unique metaphor. Um, and in the last two years, that's really what how the work has come about. Um, this, I mean, it is a lot of, I keep, I always think about how, you know, Maura and I, we went to a small private Catholic school that's really rich and uppity, but my body is very different there than my body and my blackness is where I grew up in Harlem or where I am and how I live in Atlanta. And so... Um, that color contextualization really is something I'm so mindful of as I've lived and been in so many parts of the country. And so it's with that that I kind of move forward um, and think about things in more perhaps abstract ways than others, but in ways that are true and honest to my experience. All right. That sounds amazing in so many very thought-provoking ways. Um, the last question that I have before we move to the 2 p.m. Um, workshop or conversation with Julia in the next Zoom, um, my last question before we go is, I know a lot of um, individuals who are exhausted at the moment. Um, their Black body is being disrupted. Their peace is being disrupted. Their work, their art is being disrupted by so many things. And so I wonder, by avoiding using your body, have you been able to find some like realm of safety in your work so that you're not hyper-sexualizing your body, that you are not um, putting yourself in a space where you may not feel like your work is authentic to your experience? I don't, I don't think that you can do that with, I don't know, I don't think you can do that. I don't think that the art makes me safe. I don't, well, I know art making doesn't make me safe. I know that, um, I don't know. I, I don't think I can find safety in the way you describe. I don't, I don't know if art functions that way. Um, the pandemic, teaching, just life, um, you know, things happen in which the body is stressed. I don't know if my process necessarily takes me, creates safety. It might create, um, it is very methodical. Um, and it does create um, a sense of, that's good. This is a good layer. I'm just going to have to stop and say that. This is a very good layer. Um, it does help me create a sense of work. Um, but it doesn't necessarily give me all the self-care in the world that I need. I, I wouldn't say that it would do that. 
I don't think it can. I think you, that has to happen somewhere else. I don't know. Well, thank you for that. My hands are too gross to like move the camera anymore. <laughs> to, like, wash them. I love you all so much. The love is mutual, Myra. <laughs> so much for this. Um, so I think we can all unmute ourselves to give Myra a friendly. They're all wonderful people. <laughs> I want to touch my iPad. I just going to touch my iPad. Love you all. Love you all so much. Thank you all for showing up to Mara's studio tour. Bye. Thank you, Mara. Bye-bye.